The serratus plane block is one of several fascial plane blocks of the thoracic wall. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy and rationale for this block and go through in detail the block technique. The aim is to advance the needle underneath the anterior edge of latissimus dorsi muscle and to spread local anesthetic all along the side of the chest wall. The local should spread out in a plane between serratus anterior muscle beneath and the latissimus above, blocking the nerves that travel through that area. And the nerves we're getting? Well, we're after the lateral cutaneous branches of the T2 to T8 or 9 intercostal nerves. If that sounds close to the PEX2 block, it's because it is. The techniques are very similar, with the serratus plane block being performed somewhat more inferior and posterior compared to the PEX2. The result is a moderately greater extent of blockade on the chest wall compared to PEX. The other three nerves that are consistently blocked are the intercostal brachial, the long thoracic, which innervates the serratus anterior muscle, and the thoracodorsal, which is a motor nerve to latissimus. This is relevant when discussing the block with surgeons and patients so that everyone is aware that a transient winged scapula might occur from the long thoracic nerve blockade. Here is the expected sensory distribution following serratus plane block. You'll see that it does cover a good extent of the anterior lateral chest wall, including the axilla and most of the breast. Just like the pex block, we don't get the anterior cutaneous branches with this technique. In our institution, we primarily use the serratus plane block to provide analgesia for rib fractures and for some thoracic procedures, although it certainly can be used for breast surgery, as an adjunct for shoulder surgery, for placement of implantable cardiac devices, and minimally invasive cardiac surgery. We typically block these patients when they're supine while they're still under general anesthesia, and this position is easy, convenient, and ergonomic. The arm needs to be abducted to 90 degrees to facilitate the probe position on the mid-axillary line at the level of the nipple. These are very easy landmarks, which is one of the advantages of this block. A needle is then guided in plane from the anterior aspect. Here's a typical sonogram for starting the serratus plane block. You should see the fifth and sixth ribs with the pleurus sliding underneath. Immediately over the ribs, we find the serratus anterior muscle. Superficial to that is a wedge of latissimus dorsi. If you don't see the latissimus right off the bat, you probably aren't posterior enough. Just translate your probe towards the bed and latissimus should come into view. Okay, so let's look at this in real time. Here we see the fifth rib with the pleura on either side and two distinct muscle layers above, the serratus anterior muscle, note that it gets thicker as it gets more posterior, and on top of that, the anterior edge of latissimus. The needle is advanced from anterior to posterior, carefully negotiating its way into the plane between the two muscles. You should make an effort to locate and avoid the thoracodorsal artery, which lives in this plane. After negative aspiration, a small amount of saline is administered in order to test that the needle is in the correct fascial plane. The needle is carefully advanced around the artery to avoid injuring it. You should see the fascial plane unzippering as the local anesthetic peels apart the two muscles. One of my favorite aspects of this block is just how easy the fascial plane unzippers. It's usually achievable on the first attempt, unlike some other techniques where the needle is either too far or not far enough and you end up with several intramuscular injections. Continue to advance the needle into the puddle of local anesthetic to increase the likelihood that the bolus will spread over a wide area on the side of the chest wall. Most anesthesiologists use between 20 to 30 mils of dilute local anesthetic and get good results with that. If the desired extent of block is large, such as the full T2 to T9, we advocate using 40 mils of 0.2 ropivacaine with epinephrine. There are in fact two distinct descriptions of how to do this block, the shallow and the deep approaches. These refer to the location of the local anesthetic in relation to the serratus muscle, either superficial to the serratus, as we've described already, or deep to it. There's little evidence to support the efficacy of one of these approaches versus the other, so our practice is to choose the superficial approach, i.e. between the serratus and latissimus, in order to minimize complications from getting too close to the chest wall. The serratus plane block has been shown to consistently improve postoperative analgesia for a variety of chest procedures, including cardiothoracic surgery and rib fractures. The rib fracture indication raises a good question given where the local is deposited. We aim to put the local between serratus and latissimus, and that certainly gets the lateral cutaneous nerves. However, pain from rib fractures is primarily carried by the intercostal nerves that run on the inferior surface of the rib. How is the local anesthetic three layers away supposed to exert its effect when we know that dilute local crossing multiple fascial planes is not easy? We don't know the answer for sure, but it is clear that serratus plane block relieves pain from rib fracture. 
Perhaps one explanation, as was elegantly shown in this cadaver study, is that the disruptive effect of the fractured ribs creates a pathway for the injectate to reach deeper into the chest wall, possibly even as far as the intercostal nerves. You can see on the intact chest wall on the right, the dye is sequestered, superficial to the ribs and external intercostal muscles, whereas on the left, the ribs themselves are clearly stained. Here are some tips for success with serratus plane block. We're often doing these blocks in the setting of trauma or the thoracic operating room, where patients may be in various operative positions. Both supine and lateral positions are very easy to accommodate, and compared to thoracic epidural or paravertebral blocks, the serratus block is quick and easy to administer even when you're hunched up underneath the surgical drapes. You can get the job done with 20 to 30 mils of local anesthetic, but if you want to get beyond 6 rib levels, 40 mils of dilute local anesthetic may be more efficacious. Catheters are easily placed in this fascial plane and are a great adjunct in the trauma patient who has multiple sources of injury. Patients often emerge from a trauma OR with a serratus plane catheter for the patient's rib fractures in addition to another block or two for the operative site. As with many fascial plane catheters, a programmed intermittent bolus probably maximizes the effect compared to a continuous background rate. And finally, watch for that thoracodorsal artery. It's a great landmark to search for in big patients because it serves as a beacon for the correct fascial plane. However, be careful not to hit it with a needle as you negotiate the tip into the plane between the muscles.